because I think this is actually where it happens. This is the important so, stuff. Um, okay, the ocean, right? So we've done a lot of air stuff. The ocean covers 71% of our planet, 99% of the area where life can exist. We still have so much to learn about how it's absorbing carbon, you know, the, the fish stocks. It's feeding billions of people. Uh, and humanity has explored less than 5% of that. And, and most people know that. That's a, that's a pretty common statistic. What most people don't realize, though, or appreciate, is just how recently, um, oh, there's tons of problems, right? Plastic pollution, overfishing, um, ocean acidification. What most people don't appreciate, though, is just how recently we've started actually going below the surface. I mean, it's just, I mean, 100 years. Jacques Cousteau invented scuba diving in the 40s. This is you know, 75 years of, of, really, of really doing this. And, and bigger submarines. We have robots, bigger autonomous vehicles in the past 10, 20 years. But we're still at the very, very beginning of going below the surface. We, uh, my friend Eric and I, wanted to build an underwater robot because we wanted to go explore this underwater cave. And we were looking for gold, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, and we didn't know how to build the robot, so we started a website called OpenRMV.com, and we invited everyone on the internet to help us, to give us advice and feedback. And eventually, we got help. We went and explored this cave. We didn't find any gold. But we had created this underwater robot kit, and we launched it on Kickstarter, and we raised $100,000, and we were shipping these kits. And over the past three years, we've shipped 3,000 of these kits to just about every corner of the globe. People are doing all sorts of stuff. They've been under the ice in Antarctica. They've been to the top of the earth. This is Uliana's. She's actually giving a presentation, but she's taken them to high glacial alpine lakes in uh, Nepal. These are high schools in Oakland. They're you know, communities in the, in the Middle East. They're, people are looking and finding glass sponge reefs in British Columbia. They're creating 3D models. They're doing photogrammetry underwater. The community is really pioneering some of these new tools and technologies, um, which is pretty extraordinary to think about, that these, these group of people, we gave them a kit that kind of was hard to put together, and they created all these fantastic uses and applications for this technology. I'm going to tell you just a few quick quick stories. This is Lori James. She's a scuba diver in, in Seattle and had built our ROVs because she wanted to monitor um, these sea stars that were dying in and around her area. And she reported this to scientists, and they confirmed it was part of this widespread die-off called six sea star or sea star wasting syndrome. And she started the citizen science program and collected all this data and was actually one of the, the driving figures in getting attention towards the the problem. And then there were politicians who got involved and and they proposed this new bill for marine disease. So she kind of closed the loop this citizen, by being a citizen scientist from what was going on on the ground to get the media involved, get the politicians involved. It was a really fantastic story. Another one is this group in Mexico. So this is a group of fishermen off the coast of the Yucatan who got one of our robots because they wanted to figure out where these grouper aggregation sites were. These groupers aggregate in different places all over, and it's a really important time for their development cycle, and the fishermen wanted to know where they, they were so they could protect them. And so the fishermen got together, they used one of our robots, and they created one of these, these marine protected areas for these groupers. So they created a, a solution that was good for the fishermen and for the fish. Now this is, what, this is kind of what, what you guys are doing. It's on the ground. It's a solution. It's in the field. We didn't tell them this is what they should do. They just had this tool, so all of a sudden there was kind of this focal point on something that they could do. So it's been a wild ride for the past few years. We've gone from just two people in a garage not knowing what they're doing to this global community of underwater explorers and citizen scientists. 
and we're just getting started too. We, this is our latest underwater drone, this is the Trident. Um, we ran a Kickstarter for a project for this at the end of last year, last year and we raised $800,000 and we're getting ready to ship these um, to our flying labs. next month to the Flying Labs and probably a lot of you. Um, it's fast. This thing is really fun to fly. It sends back, I guess I should explain what it does. Would you like me to model it? Yeah. <laughs> so it dives down and it sends live video back to the surface so you can control it and see what it's seeing and you can record. It's got lights. It can go down to 100 meters. So it's deeper than most divers go than, than most light goes. It's a lot of the continental shelf. Um, it's, a, it's fun to fly, but it's also a really capable scientific tool. Um, oops. We just that's just what we picked. We just picked okay, that's our that's our design parameter, let's just go for that. Um, so we, we sell these for about fifteen hundred dollars. And um, so I'm gonna show you guys a few things. I have I have not shown this publicly, really. I showed a little bit at this conference, but um, uh, so don't write about it or anything until like maybe a couple weeks, but something we've been working on. So on the right is we're doing using these computer vision algorithms. So this is what our see that's a GoPro and this is what our our camera is going to see. So you can see that it's actually a slightly better video. It doesn't look that much better. It's okay, it looks a little yeah. better. Yeah. But this is our, our computer vision algorithm. We started doing this because we wanted to have better video. But something interesting that we discovered is we started running fa some fast feature detection on this and we're getting between 10 and 100 X the amount of features on the, on the video. So when you think about doing this photogrammetry stuff, this is the kind of, this is the kind of algorithm that's going to make it possible. The other thing that we found out is this is going to also enable all sorts of tracking. And so we've also been using this to count fish. So at one scenario that we've been talking to are these, these groups who are working with rare.org, who is working with fisheries uh, in the Philippines and Indonesia. And they have this huge problem where you know, they work with these, these fishermen and these communities to explain the value of their marine environments. And then they have to, and then, but they don't know, what, don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're seeing. They have, to, they have divers go down and they have clipboards and they're swimming these transects, kind of collecting what they're seeing. Um, but now we've, we've been running neural nets and we're getting real-time species identification. So we're going to have, we're going to be able to do fish counting and really quantify what these robots are seeing. So this is something we like, we just, just, we've got one computer vision guy and we've just been playing with this. We're like cracking open like the whole new way to monitor and understand and protect our, our marine environments. And we're just still just scratching the surface of, of what this could be. So we're working hard. Really hard, Patrick. I keep promising you back to the robots. But we're, we're manufacturing and we're going to start shipping in, in July. We'll ship a couple hundred and then it'll really ramp up in August and September. And if you guys have uses, I would love to hear what those are because we just got a big grant from the Gordon Betty Moore Foundation, the Dalios, and Rolex. And I actually can send out eight, over almost a thousand robots to citizen scientists, to researchers, to people who are to uh, flying, to we robotics. People are doing innovative stuff in the field, and we're going to organize studies around it and see how people are using it and so forth. But it's a really great opportunity. I have the resources to support the kind of work that you folks are doing. So if you guys have a use like that, you have an idea, you have a, a project, let me know. I would love to. I would love to work with you. Thank you.